Jim Cramer and David Faber had a discussion today about heavily shorted stocks and retail investors. They speak mainly about Tupperware while briefly mentioning AMC, GME, and retail investors. Let's listen into what they had to say and then I want to mention a few things about AMC, GME, and the SEC after that. Anyway, here's what I think, David. I think that good riddance to the month of July because in the second half, we had a recapturing of what happened in 2022. It's just the memes took over. I don't care for them because what they memes do. Memes took over? Well, really? Well, they started buying. It's the first I've that, kind of heard about it. Now, okay, well, look that at being Tupper. said, I, I think Tupperware's going to have to file bankruptcy, and yet people are buying it like crazy. Now, why are they buying it? Well, AMC and GME were not exactly well, paragons of, uh, no, of balance I'm, I'm saying sheet that stability. There were many stocks that moved up in the last three weeks that were heavily shorted. Yeah. And that that was the one month from the denouement of 2022 is when this happened. Mm -hmm. So I think it's our job, and we do have a job, to try to get people to focus again on real companies and not on the companies that they're taking up right now just because they're short Okay, positions. but is, is the fact that some of these companies are once again being buffeted by short selling uh, uh, a, or well, short covering. David, uh, the investors are bad. That group of investors. Enthusiasm around but that group these of names. Investors, is uh, that a bad sign? Yeah. Oh, no, no. I, I did. I did like a, with Ben Stotos, my research director. We did a huge number, huge amount of work on the fact that when you get this particular action, Tupperware, of course, can't file. It's it's a tiny company, by the way. We should well, mention. no, but I'm saying Tupperware can't tiny, file. Tiny. It's a, that, that's, it, it can't, and people I know at the company believe that it, uh, who've worked at the company believe that it cannot file and that therefore because it is insufficient liquidity to make July interest payments, it's not going to make it. But the top 15 stocks uh, that finished in the month of, of July uh, were almost all meme stocks or stocks that were heavily shorted mm -hmm. and that that has led historically to a decline in the market. And I'm just trying to warn people that our job as people who follow stocks is to say, look out. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Look out. Um, all right. That's based on one one sort of very small subsegment of the market. First, let me be clear and say that I do not own any shares of Tupperware stock. If you do, I wish you all the best. Now, as Jim mentioned, many heavily shorted stocks were up in July. One of the most notable was Carvana, and it made me very happy to see retail investors call short sellers bluff on this one. I don't own any shares of Carvana either, but it makes me happy nonetheless. I remember Kramer trashing the company and its stock back in January, saying, quote, I do not want you in Carvana. I have disliked this stock for ages, and I re reiterate that I still dislike it. He said that back in January. Since then, Carvana stock is up roughly 900%. So again, it makes me very happy to see retail investors calling short sellers and the financial presses bluff on this one. Shorts were over leveraged, much of the financial media engaged in short and distort campaigns as they often do, but that didn't phase retail investors. Now, let's talk about AMC. Yesterday, AMC published a press release saying that the company posted its best admissions revenue week in the company's entire 103-year history. Additionally, 65 AMC locations around the U.S. set their own individual all-time single-week box office records. This comes thanks to the massive success of Barbenheimer. Both Barbie and Oppenheimer have performed very well at the box office. Last I checked, Barbie had brought in more than $780 million globally, and Oppenheimer had brought in over $400 million globally. This is all very good news for AMC. And of course, we're still waiting for an update on the AMC court case and everything involving the reverse split and conversion. Hopefully we'll hear more on that soon. Now, let's talk about GME. Last Thursday it was announced that GameStop CFO is resigning, but this is nothing to be concerned about. The official SEC filing states that GameStop was informed by the CFO on July 21st that she would be resigning effective August 11th, and that her resignation was not because of any disagreement with the company on any matter relating to the company's operations, policy, or practices. So this seems to be a normal case of someone personally moving on from the company. Maybe there was a better job opportunity somewhere else. Maybe she's moving. Who knows? The point is, this resignation seems normal and nothing to be concerned about. Additionally, GameStop appointed Daniel Moore as the company's principal accounting officer and interim principal financial officer effective August 11th. Now, here's something that I find very disappointing. GameStop has announced that, quote, due to regulatory uncertainty of the crypto space, GameStop has decided 
decided to remove its iOS and Chrome extension wallets from the market on November 1st, 2023. Now, given the lack of regulatory clarity in the US regarding crypto, I don't blame GameStop for making this move. What's frustrating to me is the SEC's selective enforcement and ruling by enforcement before clear guidelines have even been issued. Coinbase and Binance get slapped in the face with enforcement actions, but FTX and Prometheum get a free pass. The SEC will go after the small fish like savvy management for naked short selling, which they should, don't get me wrong, but they ignore the massive hedge funds, banks, and market makers ripping the financial markets off of billions and billions of dollars. And that's very frustrating. So again, I don't blame GameStop for doing this. It's just frustrating to see one, the lack of regulatory clarity, two, the SEC's selective enforcement, and three, the SEC's ruling by enforcement before clear guidelines have even been issued. As retail investors, these are some of the issues in the financial markets that we would like to see fixed. We want the SEC to not engage in selective enforcement. We want clear regulatory guidelines, and we want the SEC to not just go after the small fish, but also the massive megalodons ripping the markets off of tens of billions of dollars. Additionally, there are many other problems plaguing the financial markets as well. And so, as I often say, as retail investors, what we want is simple, and nothing we're advocating for is beyond the realm of reason. Individual investors want a free, fair, and transparent stock market. We want large institutions to be held accountable for their actions. We want retail investors to have access to the same real-time data from exchanges better private feeds, which is currently only available to Wall Street. We want large institutions to be required to report on their short positions more frequently. We want an end to payment for order flow. We want increased competition among market makers, and we want all of retail investors' orders to be routed directly to lit, transparent exchanges rather than opaque dark pools. Ultimately, it's simple. What we want is a stock market that offers a truly level playing field for all investors. And that's it for this video. Please leave a like on this video so we can get this information out to more people. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.